Good morning all, it is Monday, January 25th. The booktube prize dropped and I've been assigned to my group. I've only heard about one of these books. I wasn't necessarily like inclined to read it. So this is definitely gonna be a learning experience for me and something where I'm gonna have to like push myself to try new things out of my comfort zone because these are not the type of nonfiction books that I would usually pick up. And maybe that will inspire new subgenres that I may like, which makes me a little bit excited, but also I'm a little, ner little nervous. <laughs> so I'm currently on my library's website and I'm trying to see which of these my library owns and also how I can get to them. So the first book is Black Wave by Kim Gattas. Never heard of this book. I don't, I've never seen this cover either, but it is available to listen to on Hoopla and I can get it at my library. They do own a copy, so that makes me feel better. So for Fathoms, it also is there. It's only available on um, book. It doesn't look like there's an audiobook for it. So I'm gonna have to do a little bit more searching when it comes to this one to see if maybe from a different library system I could possibly get the audiobook as well. Milltown. So this one does have an audiobook. It does have a book. What is this even about? Carrie Alsnot grew up in a rural working class town of Mexico, Maine for over a hundred years. A community orbited around a paper mill that employed most- Oh, maybe I have heard of this. To the destruction of the environment and the decline of the town's economic war and emotional health and a slow moving catastrophe. Earning the area the nickname Cancer Valley. Hmm. Hmm. And 354 pages. That's another thing that I want to look at is how long these books are. All right. The Man in the Red Coat. Oh, it's a biography. No audiobook that I can see. What is it about? Where have I heard the name Julian Barnes before? He was a Man Booker Prize winner. That's why. I would never, never have picked up this book in my life. It's a long-standing exchange of ideas between Britain and France. Like, that does not appeal to me at all. And the life of a man who lived passionately in the moment, but whose ideas and achievements were far ahead of his time. Like, I don't care about this man. The next one is um, one that I have heard about, obviously. Seems like we have the audiobook. The audiobook CD is on order, so that means there's probably an audiobook that I could maybe get. But this is one that I'm actually excited about because um, I've heard of this one, for sure. Oh, fevers, feuds, and diamonds. But those are my six books. I am going to start putting some of them on hold and start coming up with a game plan of how I'm going to read all these books within the next two months. Wish me luck. All right, this is the plan. These are the books that I have to read. Oh God, my nail looks horrible. <laughs> these are the books that I have to read. And here's my plan of attack. So I'm thinking in February, Black Wave, Milltown, and Fever Feeds and Diamonds. Black Wave and a few feuds and diamonds are pretty long. They're the longest ones out of the bunch. So that's why I put them in February to kind of get started on those. And then I also put like where I, I will find them. They're all like in different places, honestly, and through different library systems. But thankfully there's an audiobook available for everything. So that's great. And then in March, my thought was the more short books. So hopefully like be done with all the long books at first. Um, so Vesper Flights, Fathoms, and Man in the Red Coat at the end. And those are 10 hours, 12 hours, and nine hours respectively and I do need to ask them to buy Man in the Red Coat. The audiobook exists, just need to tell the library to please buy it for me. Um, and then which are ready and which I have to put on hold. Like for example, there's a wait list for Vesper Flights, but pretty much all the other ones are ready to go right away. Um, so let's do it. I think I'm done kind of planning and um, next you'll see my reviews for these books. Hi everyone, it's Vanessa. I'm here to let you know what I thought about all of the books that I read for the Booktube Prize Octa Finals. And the books that I had to read for my round all together is The Man in the Red Coat, Fevers, Feuds, and Diamonds, Fathoms, Meltdown, Black Wave, Vesper Flights. So I will talk in the order of my enjoyment of them and just give you kind of general thoughts about them. I didn't write Goodreads reviews for them and I didn't really rate them and I don't feel strongly about some of them. Um, <laughs> so I feel like it's been kind of a wash. I don't know if this is totally helpful to you, but I will just talk to you about what I thought about the books for sure. I'll start with my least favorite book. And it was The Man in the Red Coat by Julian Barnes. This book is beautiful inside. The paper quality is beautiful. The paintings and photographs that are included in it are beautiful, interesting. I just thought this book was kind of strange to me. This is for a particular kind of reader and I am not that reader. This is for people who are <laughs> maybe more cultured than I am in a way. Um, people who are interested in these kinds of 
playmakers from a historical time period and that just wasn't me. I did not really care for the main person in the story. We're really talking about three people, but I couldn't really tell you how they were truly connected. This book went on tangents upon tangents and that was the style of it. That's the style of the way that Julian Barnes writes. He just has random thoughts. So he really inserts his voice into the book and if I had to rate this book, I'd give it a star and a half maybe. The next book um, on my list is Fevers, Feuds, and Diamonds and I was quite interested that this moved on to the next round. Again, I feel like it's very similar to The Man in the Red Coat. I feel like this is for a particular type of reader. I am a reader that does not enjoy dense books. When your book is so dense and long, it actually detracts how I critically think about it and how I enjoy it as well because if it takes you this long to say these things, you could either write two books or you could think about like what's the most important aspect and really focus on that instead. This did feel like a book in a book. This was a book about Ebola and the Ebola crisis in 2014 in um, Africa, but then also combining that with the history of why this could happen where it happened and looking at colonialism and looking at health deserts, how history impacted how this could have happened. All of those ideas are very thoughtful and interesting and I was very fascinated by this book in the first part when we were just focusing on the present day in 2014. He's a physician and anthropologist. He is part of Partners in Health which is an organization that responds to crises like this. So I felt like I was very interested in hearing his story and him being like the boots on the ground and his organization being there helping and how to connect with locals to get them the help that they need. Needed. And then this book switched and it became a history of colonialism and that was wasn't as immediate to me and took me out of enjoying this book, right? Because I was so focused on one part and then I was like pulled out sent to another story. I felt like this was just too many ideas in one book. I will also say that the author loves very particular words that he continues to use over and over again. One of those phrases and words is obliet, obliet, I think is how you say it. It basically means like a trap door at the bottom of like a cellar or some, something hidden and he used this word multiple times. It really became kind of like a running gag for me when he was gonna say it next. I think I'd give it like two or two and a half stars, but I know that people love deep dives like this and histories like this. The next three books are really, I think, on par with each other. I can't really decipher how to rate them. Um, if you wanna know how I rated them, I ended up putting this one in the fourth spot. I ended up putting this one in the third spot and I ended up putting this one in the second spot. But if I'm quite honest with you, that was the most difficult aspect of putting together my list, which I didn't think it was going to be so hard for me to be able to rank these, especially like that middle pile. There were just so many things in that middle pile, these three books, that I was just like, they're okay, I like them and I like them for different reasons and I can't really rank them. So that was quite difficult for me. So I ended up putting this one in the number four because I felt like similar to Fevers, Feeds, and Diamonds, there's a lot of history happening. I think this one is a lot more successful in laying that out to the reader and making it easy to understand. And I appreciated that because I read this one right after Fevers, Feeds, and Diamonds. It was an interesting history for sure of seeing how something that started in the 50s, 60s, and 70s has to do with how the Middle East functions now. The most successful parts of this book are the personal stories. The author focuses on particular people as kind of like culture icons of how the way that they are existing in this world is affected by the changes that are currently happening in the Middle East. And one of those people, for example, is um, Jamal Khashoggi. And so it looks obviously into how his death that happened out there was a result of all of these changes that have been culminating over the decades. There was another story about a woman who was a reporter and journalist and seeing how these changes also affected her career and her career as a woman reporter and what that meant for like what she could say on air, how she had to dress on air. She lived in a very progressive country that was changing because of all of these religious and political interactions. Sometimes it was difficult for me to be fully in, especially when we were talking about so many historical figures. We learned a lot of names and I'm not quite sure that they all like went in my brain 
correctly. I am not someone who comes into this with a lot of background knowledge or context. And the one that I rated above Black Wave, but I feel it's kind of the same. I think I would rate this one also three and a half stars is Fathoms, The World in the Whale by Rebecca Giggs. This is a book all about whales, different ways that humans have changed the way that they think and use and interact with whales. The things that this book did really successfully, I think each chapter focused on something that was different. So each chapter felt like its own little story, um, but at the same time they all added on to each other. There were some chapters that were really really fascinating and did make me think and like start googling things. I watched like some random YouTube videos about whales just because the way that she presents the whales and talks about them made me intrigued. I don't really know quite much about whales. I don't read a lot of nature or animal nonfiction books for adults if I'm honest. So this was kind of out of my comfort zone. At times I would say that she does kind of overwrite some parts. She is a writer that tries to write beautifully about whales. It's nature writing that has kind of like a novelistic twinge to it. How she also brings in like her own personal experiences and how she views the world, the natural world that she inserts in here as well. Some of those parts I would say are very successful and then other parts felt a little bit overwrought and like too much and I kind of just wanted her to go back to the whales. But I learned quite a lot of things about whales in this. I didn't know at all that whales, when they're dying, they actually get so hot, which is the opposite of humans who get so cold when they die. Sometimes they explode from how hot they are and that is part of their end of life. I, I had no idea. So fascinating in, in multiple aspects and one that I'm kind of, I'm very glad that I read. Again, don't think it's quite for me and I know that there's so many people that love books about the natural world, nonfiction books about the natural world, and this is who that is for, okay? I feel like there just weren't quite the right subgenres of nonfiction that I like to read in my nonfiction rant. The next one, I think, is probably the most hooked into the story that I was, but at the same time, one of the ones that I was kind of like, what are you talking about? Um, and that is Carrie Ars Arsenault's Milltown, Reckoning with What Remains. I have quite a problem, it seems, when it comes to books that talk about politics and Trump from the, I guess, downtrodden, like lower middle class, old timey town that used to have lots of factories and the economies are changing and how they portray why these towns and counties in this country went towards Trump. And I just can never get on board, can never get on board. And it seems like it's something, an argument a lot of writers and authors from these areas really want to harp on is that this is all because of economic reasons that they voted for Trump. And I'm just, I'm just not getting on board with that argument. I think it's not a sound argument and I don't agree with it. And I don't think the evidence she provides gets me on board with her. That was my mini rant. <laughs> so Milltown is about a town in Maine. Yes, Mexico, Maine. And in this town, there have been a lot of changes. There used to be a paper mill and that employed the entire town, basically. The whole town existed because of this mill. And without this mill, everything is changing. At the same time, thinking about this paper mill and how the paper mill has affected the environment and the ecosystems in the town and in the surrounding areas in general, how it has basically been called um, Cancer Valley. So a lot of people have been sick because of their work in the paper mill or living in the town. Some of it has been directly linked to the paper mill and then other parts um, they think that it added to it but it's not like a direct link. So it's her, Carrie Arsenal's fight to try to get the conglomerate company to accept that this is true, that they are affecting the environment and hurting it and hurting some of the ecosystems and hurting the people who live there and at the same time trying to implement new things to make this town healthier. It is memoir in part because it's her reliving how her family has been brought up in this mill um, and how all of her family has worked there basically. She has this nostalgia for this town. She loves this place but at the same time she sees all of these issues. What I liked about this book and what I thought that it did really well is to have this main thesis and idea but then to also intermingle it with real life memoir-like 
aspects that was very effective in this book this was probably the book out of all of these five or six that i truly felt like invested i was i was in the reading experience and the listening experience on audiobook I was in. I, w I didn't want to stop reading this book. She writes in a way that makes you feel for the people of this town and also she starts kind of investigating and going on this paper trail so it has those aspects that make it really um, exciting I guess is what I would say. If excitement to you is like going through old diaries and old paperwork to try to find information to then like throw at the corporate overlords which i think is exciting you already heard my rant like i felt this book was going there i was like this is a four star read this is great and then it started talking about like how the town and the changes have affected why everybody has like gone to trump but yeah i did enjoy this book i would recommend this book i think it is the most accessible book out of all of the ones that i'm talking about today last but not least is vesper flights by Helen McDonald. This is the one that got to number the number one spot for me. I've never read H's for Hawk, so I was kind of going into this thinking that it was about birds. Vesper flights and then look at the cover. It definitely is, but it's not just about birds. It's also about other animals and just the natural world and how the natural world intersects with humans and how humans live and act, how we hurt the ecosystem, how we try to cling to natural life and natural ecosystems. I didn't know that this book was a book of essays. I thought that it was one singular story that we are following all the way through. So I quite like that experience. I like that the essays were really short for the most part. I think the longest ex essay was not more than 20 pages and a lot of them were like four pages, five pages. And I like that rapid look through it felt like we were getting little snapshots of all of these ideas that she has about how we connect with the natural world there were quite a few essays in here that i really felt emotional for and i think that is what makes her so successful in this book is how she writes these stories she makes you care for these animals and she makes you care for how we try to gain meaning from how they live there was one story that i'm still thinking about about how we think about deer and how she views deer as like she didn't want to learn about deer she thought that they were just like boring animals she starts thinking about vehicular accidents with the deer and you know deer in the headlights and that kind of idea that we have of how we think about deer and she goes through this whole thing talking about how they must view these vehicular accidents um considering like we usually just think about it from our perspective and like what's going to happen to my car and so seeing it from the opposite way and then her kind of ending the story thinking about like hmm i should learn more about deer they are quite fascinating creatures and that really really made me wistful and like i felt like these little feelings and i i was just like oh little deer like i just want to hug them there's another story that i keep thinking about too and i keeps coming up in my head about why we put out bird feeders in our houses and um, in our yards and you know how that affects them how they change their patterns and where they go because they know that that is like food that's going to be there for them and why at the same time why do we do it why do humans do that why do we try to feed birds right trying to uh, have this connection still with the outside world that i found quite beautiful there's just little stories like that all throughout there's quite a lot of stories and i think there's there's something in here like little nuggets of wisdom and thoughts that i think anybody would really connect to i think that's what she does the best in this book is really making you connect with the outside world again as someone who doesn't read this kind of stuff all the time i don't really care that much about the outside world i'd rather be inside it gave me a new appreciation for their plight out there their little little animal lives that they are just trying to survive so this ended up being the order of how I rank them in my nonfiction pile from lowest to highest but this kind of middle three I just don't I just don't quite know this I ended up rating four stars by the way I thought there would be at least one five star but there was a one and a half star a two or two and a half star and then like two or three three and a half stars 
and then just one the soul for starbuck if you've read any of these books or would like to read it any of them let me know or if you were part of this round um if you want to tell me how you rank them down below that'd be really interesting i'm curious what other people thought about that same round of books that i read i tried really hard to think about like the quality of the writing and the quality of like how i connected and understood and how these species that these people that these writers had came across to me and how effective they were as a piece of non-fiction writing but at the same time it's a little subjective i would say for sure thank you so much for watching my video i will see you in my next one bye bye